Hey everyone, I finished watching the next Wild Force episode, The Master's Herald Part 1. Let's see. After Forever Red, we get back to, like, the standard story with a really cool episode. I've always really liked this one. I remember seeing this one when I was a kid. I'm kind of surprised how many Wild Force episodes I remember seeing because before, like, re-watching Wild Force this time, I was thinking back to when I was a kid watching Power Rangers and... I didn't remember watching all that much Wild Force. I thought this was a season that I had missed a bit of, but actually I do remember seeing quite a bit of uh, the season. So summary, Mandalock is in a rage over his last plan failing, and he smacks Toxica. Okay, that was unexpected. She runs away, Jindrax follows, and then um, Mandalock is in the lair alone, and then a duke, a new duke org, Oni Kage, shows up. He's a ninja star org. Okay, sure, why not? So, then we see Jindrax and Toxica, and I love Toxica's face through this whole scene. She has just the perfect expression of, like, just hurt and confused and not knowing what's going on. Her whole world is falling apart, and she doesn't know what's going on. Jindrax doesn't know how to help her. Then Onikage shows up, and he's like, hey, I have a plan to capture Princess Shayla. Uh, come with me. And so Toxka's reluctant at first, but then she agrees to help him. And so the plan is to sneak into the Animarium at night. Onikage can give them these special ninja suits that allow them to sneak anywhere. Sure, why not? Anyway, then there's a weird little bit that doesn't go anywhere, where, uh, let's see. Oh, what's going on? Oh, yeah, Danny wakes up, because he hears the orgs, and, uh, he wakes Max up, and then... That doesn't really go anywhere, for whatever reason. And so then we see Toxica walking by the, uh, the fountain. She looks at it, and it's changing colors, and she becomes mesmerized by it, and she goes to touch it, and then it shocks her. And, uh, she screams, that wakes up everybody, the rangers all run in, Onikage shows up, and then, uh, let's see, the rangers are like, what are you guys doing here? And Onikage's like, our special ninja suits allow us to go anywhere, and then, oh, uh, there's a joke Jindrax has, I can't remember what he says to the rangers, but I remember what he says to Danny in particular, nice teddy bear. <laughs> And then uh, Danny's like, oh, and then he tosses the bear behind him. That's an awesome scene, and one of my favorite parts of all of Wild Force is Jindrax telling Danny, nice teddy bear. I don't know why, but that's like one of my absolute favorite parts of the whole season. So then Shayla pops out of the fountain, and she's like, what's with all the noise? It's nighttime, and then she turns around, oh, orgs. <laughs> Shayla's an idiot sometimes, but whatever. The rangers morph to protect her, the orgs run away, and then Mandalock punishes Toxica again. So then she leaves, and she's upset that she let him down again. And then Onikage follows her and tells her, you have a chance to make it up to him. And then we cut away, the rangers uh, are up on the animarium wondering, huh, so why were the orgs trying to kidnap Shayla? Well, uh, we better keep her safe, and then they see an org, and they're like, oh, well, we gotta go down and deal with this org, Shayla, hide in the fountain, and she's like, okay, and so then they go down to deal with whatever org is down there, and then, uh, let's see, oh yeah, they see a bunch of past orgs that they've already defeated before, and this is always a really cool thing to see in Power Rangers or Sentai, because, uh, especially because in Sentai and Power Rangers, the monsters of the day are usually just that, monsters of the day, and they're never seen again. And it really sucks when we have a really cool, interesting monster with a great personality, a cool voice, a cool design. Most of the time, we're never going to see it again. Uh, only extremely rarely are there seasons with recurring uh, monsters of the day. So even for this brief moment that we see these old monsters, it's it's pretty cool. It's unique. It's something that I wish Power Rangers would take advantage of more often, because uh, with Sentai, usually it is one and done, but over here, I don't really see why we don't bring back monsters occasionally. In Dino Fury, they did it with Boom Tower, I think a little too much. He really wore out his welcome when there were far more interesting monsters I feel like they could have brought back. 
Dino Charge did that too, where they brought back old monsters. But they did a dumb thing where the monsters didn't talk. That was lame. Whatever. Moving on. Um, let's see. Da, 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 da. Oh, yeah. Up on the Animarium, Shayla hears Merrick. She pops out of the fountain. And then uh, she looks in the fountain and she's like, Oh, Merrick, the rangers are in trouble. You should go help them. And Merrick seems really reluctant to go and help. But then he's like, oh, okay, princess. So then, uh, let's see, Merrick arrives to the fight, and he sees Onikage. He fires at Onikage, and all the past orgs are revealed to just be an illusion created by Onikage. Then we see up on the Animarium, Shayla is watching the rangers in the fountain. Then she turns around, and she's like, Merrick, what are you doing here? You Didn't you just... You're still there, what? And then Merrick is revealed to actually be Toxica in disguise. No, duh. Shayla's not the best in this episode. Or is she? Um, anyway, Onikage uh, retreats from battle because, I don't know, Shayla calls Rangers back. And then, uh, let's see, da 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 da. Shayla's fight. Shayla fights back with Toxica. Which is really weird. I kind of wonder why she doesn't fight back more often because she's. Like, she's not the best fighter ever, but it seems like she's capable enough to deal with, like, a little bit, so... Shayla's weird in this one. I don't know what to make of her. She's stupid. She can also fight back. But then she can't. Whatever. Um, anyway, while the rangers were trying to return to the Animarium, they encounter Jindrax and a whole bunch of ninja putrids, which... This episode, like, just made me realize how little we see of the putrids throughout the series. The putrids are introduced way at the beginning, like they're gonna be standard foot soldier characters, but then they hardly ever show up at all. This is, like, the first time in... How many freaking episodes has it been since we last had putrids? I don't even know. How many episodes do the Putrids show up in? It's so weird that these are like foot soldier characters. They had toys, too. And yet they're hardly in the show. It's so bizarre. So anyway, back to the Animarium. Shayla questions Toxka. Why do you want to capture me? And Toxka's like, I don't know. And Shayla's like, you don't know. <laughs> and I do love this whole back and forth. Sh uh... Toxica never has given it any thought. She's a loyal org, and she'll do whatever whoever the master is currently tells her to do. And Shayla says that as well. Like, you just do whatever you're told, and Toxica's like, I'm a loyal servant to Mandalock, or whatever. So then uh, Shayla tries to get back in the fountain. Toxica pushes her away. Shayla pushes Toxica into the fountain, and at first it looks like she's getting shocked like before, but then suddenly she reveals that it, it, she's not getting shocked, and then she pops her horn off. Okay. That, that's a thing that happened. I remember seeing that as a kid. Like, that's the scene that made me remember, like, being a kid and watching this and being like, Whoa, what the? Ugh. <laughs> it's kind of nasty, actually. She just popped her horn off and... Like, orgs are fantasy creatures, having a horn is, like, a fantasy creature thing, but it's still really disturbing to see them, like, remove it. I don't know, like, removing a body part so casually has always been kind of, like, a thing that's just really unsettles me for some reason. I don't know why, but, yeah, it's very weird. And apparently the the uh, the fountain will shock people with an evil heart, but removing her horn means she's she doesn't have an evil heart anymore. Okay. All right then, whatever. And then we see a flashback to uh, Onikage pulled her aside and was like, "Hey, if you cut your horn off, you won't get shocked by that magic water." And she's like, "But this is my only horn." Uh, and then he's like, don't worry, it'll grow back. Are you sure? Yeah, sure. And then he takes a sword and he's like, here, let me, uh, plink. 
Huh, okay. So then anyway, uh, the Rangers are fighting with Onikage. Onikage fires a giant cannon at the Rangers, which takes them out, as well as all the Putrids and Jindrax. And Jindrax is understandably like, dude, what the... I'm right here, your people are right here, and Onikage is like, a ninja will do anything to fulfill his mission. I've never heard that rule for ninjas, but whatever. Anyway, Jindrax is disgusted with him, and he's like, I'm out of here. <laughs> and so then the rangers are like, I can't believe you'd be so despicable to attack your own people. And so then they fire a thing back, but then uh, Onikage turns out to be a decoy, and he turns into a straw puppet. Because ninja. That's another thing I remember seeing as a kid, and as a kid, uh, ninjas weren't really a big thing in the U.S., at least not in at that point in time, or like the common tropes of ninjas that you usually see in Japanese media. They weren't really that well known over here at the time, so the whole like decoy straw puppet thing, that was pretty unknown over here, especially to a little kid, so I remember seeing that and it just stood in my mind as really surreal and weird. I didn't quite get it. <laughs> so then, let's see. Did, oh man, my notes just jumped around. I don't know what in the world's going on. How far do they go? Weird. Okay. Anyway, um. So Toxica captures Princess Shayla. Jindrax uh, tags along with her and taking Shayla to Mandalock and Onikage. And then suddenly Toxica gets really weak and she collapses and then Jindrax notices your horn! And then he like waves his hand in front of what's left of her horn and he's like, whoa, it's gone! And she's like, don't worry, Onikage said it would grow back. And he's like, what? Is that true? And then Onikage does a weird thing where he turns around and he's like, I don't know what she's talking about. Like, uh... Why is he, like, pretending not to know? Like, why does he care if anybody knows he tricked Toxica into, like, basically, uh, mortally injuring herself? Because Mandalock certainly doesn't care. Mandalock doesn't care at all. Anyway, then, uh, yeah, Mandalock is like, no, horns can't grow back, don't be stupid. Then the rangers show up to rescue Princess Shayla, and then they fire an attack at Mandalock, and he blocks the blast by picking up Toxica and throwing her in front of it. Wow. Jerk. <laughs> the Rangers are like... And Jindrax is like... And Mandalock is like, her, her, I don't care. <laughs> okay, so then... Mandalock leaves, he tells Jindrax to bring the princess back to the lair, and I love... You can hear the subtle, like, inflection in Jindrax's voice as, like, he's, like, really shaken by this. He's nervous. He doesn't know what's going on. And, like, the actor, uh, I can't remember his name. Danny Stalkrip, I think, or something like that. I don't... Is that... I can't remember now who does Jindrax's voice, but they do a really good job here uh, with the subtle subtleties in his voice. Uh, Onikage stays behind the Battle of the Rangers... He grows, not needing Toxica's incantation, which I guess is lucky. Um, so then the rangers call the Zords, and Merrick stays on the ground because he senses something. He senses an org, and then he discovers it's Onikage. He didn't really grow. The giant Onikage is just an illusion. So then he shoots Onikage. The illusion giant disappears, and then he d retreats again because Onikage likes to retreat, I guess. The rangers go up to the Animarium, and they feel completely lost and confused without Shayla. Also, Mandalock throwing Toxica in front of their blast is probably shaking them up a little bit. So there's the end, and this is a very interesting episode, especially because it pushes Jindrax and especially Toxica into being more sympathetic characters, and poor Toxica has her whole worldview shaken in this, and uh, it reminds me of what happened with Diabolico and Loki, Loki and Lightspeed Rescue. They were loyal and willing servants of Manshira, and my notes misspelled were. 
Loki and Diabolico, we are... <laughs> what? Anyway, they were betrayed by Banshira, and it completely destroys, like, their faith and their people. Loki, Loki and Diabolico were both loyal servants, they were both good demons. Is that an oxymoron? Whatever. All they cared about was serving Banshira and being... Like, good examples of demons. They just want to destroy Mariner Bay and restore their kingdom. But then Banshira reveals that she doesn't care about the good of all the demons. She only cares about herself. She kills her own son and laughs about it. Or, wait, did she kill uh, Olympias? Or did he die somewhere else? And But either way, she laughed about it. She didn't care about her own son. She didn't care about her own servants. She also... Uh, killed Viper, and uh, yeah, I think Jinxer was the only one who also didn't really seem to, like, have much of a reaction to that. Anyway, moving on back to, uh, Toxica, let's see, she's on she only wants to serve Mandalock, but she receives nothing but scorn in return, and then eventually when she does do something right, she's just tossed in front of a blast for him by him, because he's a jerk, and he doesn't really care about her at all, because he's a jerk. <laughs> oh, and also, this episode was interesting because it made me realize how long Mandalock sticks around for. Like, I remember as a kid seeing Wild Force, and in my mind, in my memory as a kid seeing Wild Force, I didn't remember Mandalock sticking around for so long. I thought he was, like, just a really quick here and gone type of character, like... He shows up for a few episodes, then he's killed off and gone, then it's back to Master Org. But actually, Master Org's been gone for quite a while. Uh, yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, like, n almost ten episodes. So, yeah, Mandalock sticks around a lot longer than I remembered, which is interesting. I don't know why exactly Mandalock doesn't stick in my head. Maybe it's because he's just so overshadowed by Master Org and Jindrax and Toxica. They're far more interesting villains. Mandalock is just kind of a one-note despicable jerk. Um, let's see. Onikage. I remembered Onikage from when I was a kid. Watching this episode again brought back all these memories of when I was a kid. I really liked Onikage. I thought he had such a cool look. And I was hoping he would become like a main villain. I think he does stick around for... An episode or two. I don't think he sticks around for too... He can't stick around for too long. There's only like five or six episodes left. Anyway, Onikage is untrustworthy and deceptive, which is probably why Mandalock likes him. Um, let's see. Da, 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 da. Da, da, da. Looking at my notes here. Yeah, not really too much else to say about this one. I, I really like this one. Uh, it's got that part where Jindrax tells Danny, nice teddy bear. <laughs> it's got Onikage, cool look, decent character, not much of a personality with him. Watching this this time around, I noticed he retreats a lot. He's kind of cowardly, I think. He's not a very good ninja. <laughs> so, um, I guess that's it for this one. Hope you enjoyed it. See ya.